As the impact of climate change grows, so does the risk of ever larger and more frequent wildfires. No state knows that better than California. But the Golden State is also grappling with the role of one of the country's largest utilities in all of this and whether the company will do what's needed to prevent or stop fires. Stephanie Sai has the story. It's been five years since the California utility PG&E was placed under criminal probation for its conviction in the explosion of a natural gas pipeline, which killed eight people in 2010. The probation ends today, but PG&E remains a continuing menace, wrote the supervising judge in a concluding report. Federal Judge William Alsop says PG&E has failed to rehabilitate itself and says Californians remain, quote, trapped in a tragic era of PG&E wildfires because for decades it neglected its duties. By the judge's accounting, while on probation, PG&E has set off 31 wildfires, killing 113 Californians, burning nearly one and a half million acres, and destroying almost 24,000 structures. The utility is blamed for some of the biggest fires in the state's history, including last summer's Dixie Fire in Northern California, which burned more than 963,000 acres and destroyed 1,300 structures. The utility is also charged in the Zog Fire in 2020 that killed four people. The company has pleaded guilty to 84 counts of involuntary manslaughter in the deadly campfire of 2018, which destroyed the town of Paradise. My house and all my prop all my things that I've been saving and collecting from family members that are passed away and pictures are all gone. And that kind of hurts the most, um, really does. Uh, but otherwise, it. what do you do? Yeah, it's kind of surreal. It's hard to believe that this was once a beautiful place and I lived here and loved it and now it looks like a war zone. The judge wrote that systemic problems at PG&E remain entrenched. The company has failed to inspect and maintain outdated transmission lines. The judge deemed inadequate its reliance on outside contractors to clear vegetation around its power lines. Judge Alsip has recommended that the company be split into two separate utilities. PG&E spokesperson James Noonan said in a statement that we acknowledge that we have more work to do, but added that they have become a fundamentally safer company over the course of probation. The majority of the survivors, the judge noted, are still waiting to be compensated, and some remain in mobile homes. Only $7 million of a $13.5 billion fire trust fund have been dispersed to date. Joining us to talk about PG&E's troubled history is Brandon Riddiman. He is an investigative reporter with ABC 10 in Sacramento who has covered extensively PG&E's role in California's wildfires. Brandon Riddiman, thank you so much for joining the News Hour. Your reporting has really focused on the power of PG&E politically in California. So I want to start there. As we talk about what wasn't done in this probation period, according to this scathing final report from this judge. How does that power play in to the lack of change we've seen in improving safety um, when it comes to California's wildfires in this company? Well, thanks for having me and thanks for the question. The, the power of the company is really difficult to overstate. It has a natural monopoly over electricity to 40% of the state of California. It's one out of every 20 Americans. Uh, and because they own the infrastructure, they have this monopoly certificate from the state. And that's really not been challenged in any meaningful way. In fact, the state government has really much uh, taken very much the opposite approach and helped prop up the company's books in response to these calamities, uh, which happen to be criminal. And that's sort of where the rubber meets the road. This is criminal behavior, criminally negligent behavior by this massive company that, you know, 16 million people have no choice but to buy their product. You know, the, the judge really has a long rap sheet of, of not only what they did 
before the probation period, but during the probation period. So I guess one question is, why isn't the probation period being extended if any individual criminal was to reoffend uh, during their probation period in the ways this judge describes in this report, they would stay locked up? Yeah. That's absolutely true. I, I mean, legal experts I've talked to say that if pg e was a person, it might be looking at a death sentence by now, if not a life sentence. Uh, but prison isn't an option for a corporate entity. So even though we have corporate personhood baked into our laws, uh, this idea that a corporate entity can be held accountable for crimes just like a person can, the fact is on the punishment side of that, there are no prison bars, there are no handcuffs. If the corporate entity is the one who's found guilty or pleads guilty, pg and has done both, it's gone through jury trials and pleaded guilty, we should say that PG&E um, has said that it will allow state regulators to continue to monitor its practices for five years. Um, one of the other things that the judge said in this report is that there seems to be an ingrained culture of keeping meters turning, um, even during those power shutoffs that PG&E has done in the last few years in an effort to prevent wildfires from being sparked. Um, does that suggest to you, as you read the report, that this is a company that is putting profits ahead of safety and, and that California's regulators are allowing it to do so? What really suggests that to me is that they stood there in a courtroom and pleaded guilty to 85 felonies and said they were going to stop putting profits over safety. Now what you have is a federal judge saying they haven't really done that. They haven't lived up to those commitments that they made. Um, and that's what I think is really troubling to everyone. Now, PG&E um, often says that climate change is really to blame. And, you know, there is evidence, of course, that climate change um, changes the behavior of wildfires. Does PG&E get any allowance um, given the impact of the changing climate on California? And does the judge address that in his concluding remarks? Absolutely, the fires are worse because of climate change and also because of overgrown you know, conditions out in the wildland. We've suppressed wildfire for more than 100 years in the West. So there's a big bonfire up there. Everything is drier and warmer, and we have more days when it can burn. All of that is true. All of that is the reason why criminal negligence has to be snuffed out so that we don't have a fire spark that is utterly preventable and lose more lives for no reason. And finally, uh, Brandon, where do payments stand um, for the many victims of these wildfires and why has it taken so long for them to get relief? Yeah, so the, uh, most but not all of pg &E's wildfires were rolled into its bankruptcy, which had emerged from uh, back in 2020, around the time when it pleaded guilty to the campfire. And the victims, the scheme that was proposed to the victims, they got a yes or no vote, there weren't other choices, was take your settlement half in cash, half in stock to be held by a trust, which would then sell the PG&E stock uh, and use the money from the sale to pay you. So you have the people who have lost their you know, livelihoods, loved ones, homes in PG&E disasters, essentially being put in the position of owning a big chunk of the company that burned them out. It's never been worth the amount that they were told. Some of them have gotten their first payments, but none of them have been paid in full, and they may not be for years. And the judge writes that, meanwhile, PG&E management pays itself handsome salaries and bonuses. Brandon Riddiman, investigative reporter at ABC 10 in Sacramento. All of his reports can be found at firepowermoney.com. Thanks so much for joining the news hour. Thank you.